สวัสดีค่ะ Welcome to Hot Thai Kitchen. Today I'm going to show you how to make deep fried ice cream. And no, it is not a pregnancy craving. Although I think if you have kids, they are going to love it. So I'm going to show you how to do deep fried ice cream Thai style. And I say that because we do. We do it slightly differently from other recipes that I've seen from other countries, and it is the easiest way ever. It is not something that's super easy to find in Thailand, but it does exist. But the first time I've ever seen it was actually when I worked as a server in a Thai restaurant in the States, and they had this on the menu. And then I saw how they made it in the kitchen. I was like. Really? That's it? That is so easy. So I want to share this with you, so it's something you can keep in your freezer and pull it out whenever you have a craving for some deep fried ice cream. Let's get started. So I'm gonna start with our crust, which is made from white sandwich bread. That's it. That's all you need for each uh, scoop of. Ice cream. You're gonna need two pieces of white sandwich bread. The thickness, not too thick. Okay, don't go with artisanal sturdy one. You want something soft and quite thin. This is good. You can do whole wheat bread, but for God's sake, we're making deep fried ice cream, so you know, just saying. <laughs> um, so you want to remove the crust. But one thing I'll uh, point out to you is, if you notice, don't go. Very very thin. There's always a bit of a sort of a denser. Part of the bread next to the crust. I want to make sure I trim that off as well. Okay, so don't just trim off the brown bit. And you may have to play around with like different brands that work better than others. You know, I find that the Asian ones always work out a little bit better. Also, because they tend to be more squared. Don't get ones with like the mushroom top shape because that'll make wrapping really difficult. And the crust croutons, whatever. Like, don't waste that. So many things you can do with it. Okay, and then I'm going to roll these out just ever so slightly. So look for the part that is shorter, and we're gonna roll that out, not too flat. Don't get it completely, completely flat. <laughs> just so that it's a little bit bigger. And I also find that if I don't roll it out, it's the crust is a little too thick, a little too doughy. This makes a thinner, nicer crust. That's it. Just about that is good. So let's talk ice cream. So I've just got a scoop of ice cream. Any flavor will work for this, obviously. And you want to scoop it, put it on a plate or a tray, and then freeze it for I don't know, 30 minutes to an hour, just to so it's not so soft, so it's easier for you to wrap. So what I've done here is I just took vanilla ice cream and I added some chopped chocolate just to jazz it up a little bit. You don't have to, but you know you can add in some. I don't know red bean paste if you want to do like a matcha and red bean style. So you can really play around with the ice cream mix-ins if you want. Just gonna take a bread, and if you can make the scoop rounder than what I have done, so I'm just still trying to like mush it into more of a presentable ball, that would be better. But you know what? Who cares? It's not it's not gourmet food. So you put that down there, and hopefully that's not too big. Bring all the corners up. And then you take the other piece, and then you line it up so that the corners line up with the valleys in the bottom piece of the bread. Ah! And it's not gonna look like it. It's gonna want to stay. That's okay. That's what the saran wrap is there for. You bring all the corners of the saran wrap, and then ah, this is the most difficult part of it all. There you go. Squeeze it tight. Twist, twist, twist. And that's basically it. Now, if you're doing multiple flavors, label what the ice cream inside is so you know what it is, and then you let this sit in the freezer until it is rock solid frozen. I'm gonna say at least six hours. To be honest, I always do this the day before, and I've never tested like the minimum amount of time that you need. But obviously, you need the ice cream to be as cold as possible so that when you deep fry it. You don't melt the ice cream in the process, so I would suggest doing it the day before. But six hours should definitely do it. And because this recipe is so short and simple, I felt guilty just leaving you at that. So I feel like I need to give you something else. So I'm going to show you a really nice pineapple coconut caramel sauce recipe that would go great with this. Or with just regular ice cream, it's so good. Or French toast, like it's such a great sauce. Um, but I also want to mention that if you don't want to make a sauce, you can simply do the following: Nutella with bananas. What I do with Nutella is I thin it out with some hot water just to loosen it up into a sauce consistency. You can just do a chocolate sauce. You can sauté the bananas or leave them fresh. Or if you want to do Thai style, you can do this 
epic combo of condensed milk, sweetened condensed milk, and Ovaltine or Milo powder, which is like a chocolate um, malt drink mix powder. It goes really, really well together. I would say that you really do need sauce for this because, I don't know, just the deep fried ice cream itself, it's good, but with sauce, it's a lot better. So even if it's just like a strawberry sauce or something, a fruit compote that's really simple would work as well. Okay, let me show you my pineapple coconut caramel sauce. All right, this sauce is so good and so easy. So I've just got a pot here and I've got um, some palm sugar, which I have chopped. I'm gonna let that melt and caramelize. You know it's gonna be good already. That's all you need to see. All right, so once it's starting to melt, just I just like to give it a stir to evenly distribute the melting. Sometimes the edges like to brown faster. Okay, so you want this to darken a little bit. You wanna develop that deep caramel flavor. I don't wanna make it too dark. I'm gonna go in with my coconut milk. And it's going to do that, don't worry, it's normal. And the sugar is going to seize up and solidify. Do not worry, it will release as it gets heated. So the inspiration of this dish actually comes from a Thai street snack of grilled bananas, which you can find on the street anywhere. Grilled bananas and grilled uh, cassava root, and then they make this palm sugar coconut sauce to go over it. So that's sort of the, the base idea, and I love that sauce so much. One more liquid I'm gonna add is pineapple juice. So this is pineapple juice that comes from the can. So canned pineapple, or you can use pineapple juice from, from wherever you get pineapple juice from. But since we're doing canned pineapple already, which we're gonna add a little bit later, just take the juice from the can. And that juice, oh, go, I mean, pineapple and coconut, right? That's a match made in heaven. So now I'm gonna let this reduce until it's a thick sauce consistency. I'm going to turn it off and let the bubbles settle a little bit. And this will obviously cool as it thickens. No, it will thicken as it cool is what I meant to say. But what you're going for consistency wise is sort of like a thin caramel sauce like that. Okay, It's got some viscosity to it. So now I'm going to add pineapple pieces. So this is just pineapple pieces from the can and I'm going to let that cook in the caramel sauce to sort of meld the flavors together. So it's had a few minutes, it's thickened up again because the pineapple will introduce some extra liquid. So I want it to cook that down until we've got that nice sauce consistency again. I'm gonna turn this off now. And to finish it off, I'm gonna stir in some butter. Yes. And you wanna stir in the butter once the sauce has is off heat because otherwise the butter fat will separate and then it won't be as nice. You thought it wasn't gonna get any better and then I added butter and you're like, yep, we're good. Beautiful. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen, pineapple coconut caramel sauce for your deep fried ice cream or not deep fried ice cream. So you want a pot of oil with enough depth to obviously cover the whole ice cream. So you will need quite a bit of oil for this. Um, I have a deep fry thermometer here. So it comes in so handy. You set the temperature and when, it, when it's hot enough, it'll beep and tell me, hey, it's time to fry. And I always set it like five degrees before. Um, like I need it at 375, I'll set it at 370. So I have time once the alarm goes off to get my stuff together. Oh. There goes my temperature. I'm just gonna remove that now. So you don't wanna pull the ice cream out until it is super uber last minute, obviously. This is one I made yesterday, and I label it S because it is a strawberry ice cream inside. And this will take 20 to 30 seconds. That's it, any more than that, and the ice cream will melt, obviously. So that's why you want high heat. That's why it's important that you know your oil is in fact hot. Like This is not the time when you're gonna be guessing temperature, right? Okay. Ooh, look at that, look how fast that browns. So I'm just gonna keep it there for a little bit longer. Obviously leave enough room in the pot so that when your oil fills up, it doesn't fill over. Ooh, that's it. How easy is that? Okay, now I'm coming to this paper towel just to dab any extra oil from the bottom and then straight onto the plate, woohoo! And just listen to this. That is how crispy that is. Oh my God, so exciting. Obviously you wanna serve this sooner rather than later for obvious reasons. 
So let me get my sauce. Look at that sauce now. It's cooled a little bit and it's just the perfect consistency. Some pineapple all around the side. I like a lot of pineapple. And take some of that caramel sauce and do a drizzle on top. And then I like to finish this off. This particular sauce goes really well with cinnamon. So a little bit of a cinnamon shower on top is really nice. And that is it. Look how good and easy that is. Now, let me cut open. Oh, yes. Ta-da! Ah, so beautiful. And by the way, not sponsored, but I like to use uh, haagen ice cream because haagen doesn't have any stabilizers, any chemicals. The ice cream is very, the ingredients are very clean. And so it's a much better quality as far as like, you know, commercially available brands go. Get some pineapple on there, some sauce on there. Mmm. Mmm. Oh my god. So good. Unbelievably delicious for something so simple, so quick and easy. You've got a stash of this in the fridge, like 20 seconds in the oil, and you're done, right? Mm, so good. That bread is a little bit crispy on the outside, goes so well with the ice cream, and that sauce is a little tart, which helps balance out the whole thing. And like when you're eating it, it doesn't feel like you're eating sandwich bread, to be honest with you. Like if, if you didn't know, you probably don't know that this is just sandwich bread, but it's so easy. Although in Thailand, we love putting ice cream in bread. So this is, this is not unexpected to see us doing this. And by the way, for our Patreon members with access to the show after the show today, I'm gonna share with you another quick little snack that you can make using just regular white sandwich bread. This is something that my mom used to make um, in case you have some bread left over from this. And if you wanna know more about becoming a Patreon member, I'll put the link in the description below. And that is it. The recipe, as always, will be on hotthaikitchen.com. When you make it, send me a photo. I would love to see what kind of ice cream, what kind of sauce you put on it. You can send it to me on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. If you haven't subscribed to the show, make sure you do so you don't miss an awesome recipe like this. And click the bell icon as well. That is how you'll be notified when I post a new video. Thank you as always for watching, and I will see you next time for your next delicious Thai meal.